they were great. And I think that what you guys are doing are, is great. I think that linking with influencers and being kind of like appreciative of the online setting, I feel like you guys see it, recognize it um, for a positive thing, which it mostly is. Um, and so I think that that's great. I would have to agree. Um, I think this is a great program um, that you guys are building now because prior to whenever I would have people who would ask me about joining the military, I would always say like, okay, where do you live? And I would get on like Google Maps and look up recruiters in that area. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's rare meeting. My name is Tax Sergeant Erin Marino, and I'll be facilitating our discussion today. So today's meeting is episode two of linking influencers with recruiters. The goal is to foster connections between influencers and recruiters within our community. So joining me are Second Lieutenant Lang and Staff Sergeant Woman. Before we dive into the nitty gritty of the meeting, let's take a moment and give our two guest speakers a chance to introduce themselves and hopefully we'll get to know where they're from, why, and how they joined the Air Force because we all know there's different routes that we can do, as well as their current AFSCs and what they do now. So, Lieutenant Lang and Staff Sergeant Woman, who wants to go first? Lieutenant, you can go ahead and <laughs> take the floor. Okay, sounds good. Hi, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Lang. I'm originally from Illinois. Also, let me know if I cut out at all or you can't hear me. But I am from Illinois, and both of my grandpas were in the Air Force. And so that kind of inspired me to look into it. And I really wanted to get out of Illinois. You know, nothing wrong with it, but I was ready to see some other things. So I applied for an ROTC scholarship when I was 16, and I got accepted, and I ended up going to Ohio University, and I loved it there. And so I did four years of the program there, and then I graduated and missioned in 22, and then now I'm stationed out in Colorado Springs, and it's really great. And I'm a force support officer, and I currently am working in the military personnel flight. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Woolman. I am from Nebraska originally, so kind of similar stories to um, LT. I wanted to get out of the Midwest and just kind of um, explore. I also wanted to become a police officer because everybody in my family was police officers. And then overnight decision, I was like, I'm going to one up them and I'm going to join the military. So it was kind of a last minute choice. Um, I have been in for about 10 years this June and I am a 4 and medical technician and um, currently a tech school instructor at the schoolhouse um, down at Metsy in Fort Sam Houston. Awesome. Thank you both so much for the introduction. It's great to have you both here today. So now I'll ask some questions to get your perspective as, you know, the influencer. So uh, first question would be like, what initially made you want to create a content or, you know, be an influencer that you are now? Okay, so I grew up in the social media generation. I think that I downloaded Instagram when I was like 12 years old, I think. And so I've been on it for a long time. And then when I went to college, I was in a sorority. And a lot of my sorority sisters were very active on social media. And it was actually a big part of recruitment. Like for our sorority recruitment, we were required to post things about our sorority. We were required to post things about like college life and what Greek life offered. And so I was very used to posting on social media. And um, I realized that people were interested in RTC. A lot of my friends in college were asking me like, what does an RTC cadet even do? So I actually started making my first couple of videos um, my senior year of college. And then I continued it on active duty when I started seeing other military influencers, because I originally thought, oh, there's no way I can continue continue this when I hit active duty. And then I started seeing, you know, captains, majors and seniors on um, social media and making a positive difference online. So I thought that it was very cool that they kind of humanized the uniform. And so I thought, why not do it myself? For me, it was kind of an accident. 
Um, it was kind of, it's a hobby, really. I started off posting um, my gym content, um, joining, but when I first joined the military, I had to lose a lot of weight in order to meet the requirements. So that's where my actual gym passion stemmed from. And then, so I would just post that and I started building that community. And then I started joining some of the military groups um, on Instagram. And I was like, this is a really cool community too. Let me start posting about this more. So then my um, audience started to shift over to military and I would start becoming friends with people all around the world. So when I switched duty stations, it was like easy to make friends because I kind of already knew them. So whenever you create your content, right? Um, is there like, do you guys have like a specific goal or like a theme that you create when you do your videos? Yes. So it took me kind of a while to find like my niche and kind of what I wanted to continue to put out. I was looking at a lot of the other like military influencers and I kind of took what I liked about each. And so I like to offer advice. I like to do talking videos. I like to do interviews, especially um, some people in my old space unit let me interview them. And that was really cool. I like to do day in the lives because that's what I am interested in. I like watching other people's day in the lives. So I do that. Um, and then I like to show what TDYs are like, what the Space Force does. I would say more on the education side but I occasionally throw in like a lighthearted or I would say kind of the same I enjoy finding like the trending sounds that I can relate to military life and make it funny in a way whether I'm like trying to like join in the laughs on like people calling us the chair force or if I'm talking about just typical things that most military people already um, experience as well like my most recent one I was talking about checking your leave balance because I feel like that's something we always look at probably I, I look at mine at least once a week probably um even though I know it's not going to change but maybe if I get lucky so I like to make stuff that's pretty funny and relatable but then it also offers a chance for me to um, give insight to those looking at joining the military so particularly with the leave one I put in there if you're looking at joining we do get 30 days of paid leave um, you get 2.5 days a month so it gives me a chance to also give advice to those looking at joining so they can and not so much relate to it, but learn from it as well. So you both mentioned, um, you know, you like to do educational, or funny and trending videos, right? I know people nowadays, they would do anything to be famous and do crazy videos out there. So how do you maintain your authenticity on like the post or the content? That you I agree with you. I have seen some pretty wild videos, even from uh, like other service members. And for me, how I maintain authenticity is I just think about um, because my my target audience is more women currently in the military or women interested in joining. So I kind of look at it from that perspective and I think about what I'm interested in, what I would have benefited from when I was a cadet, you know, or if I was a new airman, I try to think of like what would benefit them. And that's kind of what I cater my content to. I definitely like have um, tried to do some of the trending videos and stuff before, but Lately, I've been really leaning into the advice stuff because I'm just trying to offer as much value as I can. And in um, on the flip side, I do think that for me, that has what has been what's helped me grow. For me, I really have to think about like each word that's in the sound that I'm using, everything that's in the background of what I'm posting, um, not only like being a military member, but also under METSI, um, the Medical Education and Training Campus. We have a lot of eyes on us and students, they are not allowed to follow us on social media. We have the six month rule. They're still going to look for us. They're nosy. They want to see they all the crazy things. So to me, I always think about what I'm posting in their eyes and the eyes of my leadership to make sure I'm covered on all ends there so I don't end up getting in trouble for anything I'm posted. So is it lighthearted humor or is it something that it could be taken the wrong way? So I'll sit on a video for a few days before I'm like, okay, I think this one's safe. <laughs> okay, so it's funny you mentioned that. That's always kind of like the scary part when creating um, all these videos, right? You somehow you're scared of all these negativities or 
whatever other people might say. So I guess my question is, how do you handle, you know, the negativities that you'll be getting when you're posting all these videos? Yes. So I'm still navigating that. Honestly, um, I just started my Instagram account about seven months ago. So for me, it's still fairly new, at least on that platform. I was on TikTok and I'm still on TikTok, but I've gotten the most growth on Instagram. So that's what I've been focusing on. And it's hard. It's really hard. Um, and even though my target audience is women and women in the military and women interested in joining, you know, the the other demographics, they still find you and they have a lot to say. But what I've realized is that, that for the hate and I do see a lot of hate, not just on me, but on any woman in the military, honestly, that posts on social media. I see some of the same type of hate comments. They're not creative. They're the same thing on all of our posts. And what I've realized is that a lot of the people that are hating are either one, not even in the military, so they don't really have, you know, a say, or two, they're not someone we would want in the military. Or three, they might be in the military, but not very happy necessarily with the route that they picked. And so a lot of, um, even though there is a lot of hate, you kind of just have to think, okay, where's this coming from? And then there's also a lot of positives. And I would say, even though the hate is a little bit louder, um, the positives are what I try to focus on. And I get a ton of messages asking, like, how can I join the Air Force? So I know that, you know, we're still doing something right. I would have to agree no matter how much I try to reach a specific audience there's definitely going to be those people the keyboard warriors that have something to say because they feel confident behind a screen where they have like an anonymous account um, for me, I starting off in social media, I used to always get made fun of by my friends for always taking pictures of myself. And they'd be like, Oh, there goes a woman taking another selfie. And I just own it at that point. I'm like, you know what, I love myself. I'm confident with myself. And I'm going to display that confidence. If you are feeling some type of way, you're intimidated by it, like, I will let you figure that out. I will never put you down. I will be here to hype you up and help you get there. But the biggest thing that I also see is from those specific people who like to hate message um they like to come at me for doing my lashes or um showcasing like different hairstyles things like that but as long as i am following the afi i have all grounds covered again there's nothing you can come at me for where i will feel insecure because i have a ground to stand on and then again like um, lieutenant said there is a lot of positive that comes with it so when other women see men hating on me they just like go to war and they're like you could never like come at her for that she's a great leader it has nothing to do with her leadership that kind of stuff and I always like to twist it because now I know the reg when it comes to lashes specifically I have students that have questions I can use that as a mentorship moment to say hey let's look at the AFI this is where you can find it these are the regs like how long your lashes can be um, that kind of stuff so I just use it to my advantage I love that. Okay. So out of all the videos you guys have posted, um, which one would you say was particularly effective or meaningful to you? Okay, so I think that my best my my two best ones um to date were I made a video about six facts you might not know about the Space Force. And that blew up. I remember I um, compiled just some footage that I had taken on one of my Space Force TDYs when I was still assigned to my space unit. And I just did a voiceover for it. And I was just naming six random facts that are honestly very Googleable, you know, nothing crazy, but just a lot of people don't know anything about the Space Force or they have misconceptions about it. So that one did very well. And I was really happy with that because it kind of just opens the conversation about Space Force. And then um, another one that I was really proud of was I got my friend who's a lieutenant in the Army, um, and she did a video with me. And we were comparing differences between the Air Force and the Army. And that one did pretty well, too. And people found it entertaining. And um, and then for girls, they got to see um, two like females, you know, in the military. And so those were my two favorite. Um, I also have two. So the first one is my video that actually has the most views, but it is of me and my fiance. So I like to share this story with my students whenever they're not getting along, you know, like big groups of people always go through like a storming phase where everybody fights or they 
they were just nitpicky on each other's personalities. So my fiance and I actually went to basic training together. He was in my brother flight. We went to tech school together, our first duty station. We worked in the same clinic together. We were not friends. Like we did not care for each other. We were very annoyed by each other. And now that we're stationed together again as instructors, we were friends at one point, like after, I want to say like year two, um, we were like, oh, you're not that bad. But coming back, working together again, now we're engaged. And it's, I always like to use that to tell my students, like, this isn't going to be the last time that you see somebody. Don't burn any bridges. Like you want to network, you want to make connections. Even if you're not like the best of friends, this isn't going to be the last time that you see them. Um, it's a small Air Force. And so I like to use that photo. It's literally a photo of us with those big goggles on and where you were supposed to be like running in place during the obstacle course. Very embarrassing, but it's a good um, mentor tool. And then my other one for me, it wasn't anything crazy. It was a funny video about like looking at ranks before you say anything crazy. The video took me literally three seconds to make and it blew up. And I was like, it really does doesn't take much to be able to relate to people. So it encouraged me to continue to make more content. So it's like, what else could I pull that is relatable to others? That is awesome. So with that successful or like that, you know, effective videos that you guys have, right? Um, do you think you recruited potential applicants based on the content you've shared? Yes or no? Just yes or no. <laughs> yes. Yes, I for have. sure. <laughs> okay. So can you share any successful stories or what do you think contributed to their success? So I think that um, a lot of like young, you know, high schoolers or people in college, they're already kind of looking for what do I want to do with my life? You know, like I knew when I was 16 and that's when I applied for my RTC scholarship, I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. And even though I didn't grow up like with like TikTok kind of came a little bit later. Later, but the kids now are on all the social media sites, like looking for inspiration kind of of what they want to do with their lives and looking for things that they like and inspire them. And so with the specific content that I make, you know, just stay in the life and stuff, I have gotten a lot of questions from people who are interested. And it's been really cool. I actually um, have personally enlisted over 10 people um, this past year. And then I got to do a oath of commissioning as well well. Um, and that was from um, working with a recruiter at the local um, reserves recruiting office. And so that was really cool. I have students currently, I had a student today, actually, so this is very recent, um, who told me that her friend sent her my a video from my Instagram. And I was like, oh, like, is she also in this course? And she was like, no, but she wants to join now that she saw you as an instructor there. She thinks it's really cool. Um, so that's the most recent one. But in the past, I I have had um, people who are interested asking about the medical career field specifically because that's what I would post about mostly prior to becoming an instructor. And I would be... I was in a phase two location where the OJT students would come train at my base and I would have some of the OJT students come up to me and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if you remember me, but we talked about becoming a medic and I'm here because of you. And that was probably the most rewarding like moments that I've experienced. That is so awesome. Okay, so is there anything you'd like to share to us recruiters about what we could possibly be doing or improve on based on some feedbacks that you might have heard from those that are in or are trying to join the Air Force? And to those that are watching as well, if you have any questions, please feel free to, you know, put it on the chat so I can ask them as well. Yeah, so all of the recruiters that I've worked with, given I have only been on active duty a year and a half and I've only worked with about two, but and then this is pretty funny. I don't think it's, I'm sure it's none of you guys, but I will get messages sometimes being like, LT, how do I join the Air Force? My recruiter ghosted me or something like that. And I don't know if, you know, that's real or not. But yeah, I have gotten like two or three messages that is like, I can't get a hold of a recruiter. Um, but otherwise, I can't think of anything else. Like, I think you guys are killing it. And I don't, I take those messages with a grain of salt. 
I would have to agree. Um, I think this is a great program um, that you guys are building now because prior to whenever I would have people who would ask me about joining the military, I would always say like, okay, where do you live? And I would get on like Google Maps and look up recruiters in that area. And I would always like give a list like, hey, one of these doesn't answer, like don't quit because it took me three times to contact a recruiter to find somebody who was interested in taking me. And then also finding somebody who was able to get me a medical job because I know medical is harder to come by for you guys. I know it's not something you guys can control, but um, the medical career field, we have like a lot more opportunities than the students that we're getting to the 4 no career field specifically are even aware of. Um, we do have expedited IDMT programs now that we're able to fill so that they can go from being a 4 no straight to the IDMT, the Independent Duty Medical Technician Schoolhouse, and they're able to work as a provider. So it's kind of uh, similar to a PA, except they um, don't have the certifications. So um, kind of giving them those tidbits beforehand as well. I know, again, for like career field is a little bit hard to come by for recruiters, but um, just letting them know like what opportunities they do have when they do get there. Okay, so you might, you guys mentioned, you know, you get a lot of messages and stuff like that um, about the Air Force, the process, how to join. How do you handle those inquiries? Yes. So honestly, like I'm not able to answer every single one um, because social media is very time consuming and I don't like I try to do it just in my free time. I really don't want it to take away from my day to day, you know, for support job. Um, and so honestly, I pick Sundays and I try to go through my DMs on Sundays. And if there's a couple questions that stick out to me, I'll actually screenshot the question in the DM. I'll blur out, you know, like draw out their name so that they're still anonymous. And then I'll answer the question on my story because I find that I end up getting a lot of the same questions. So I just answer it publicly on my story. And then I have a story highlight that is specifically just for Q and A's. And then when someone asks me a similar question to something that I've answered before, I can just refer them to my Q&A highlight. And I in the, when I do answer them, I include links. I'll include links to like a video or an article that might help them. And um, now I can, you know, link them with the recruiters. But so that's kind of how I do it. I try to answer it publicly so that it can help more than one person. I really like that idea, LT. I might steal that because for me, I'm like trying to find a recruiter for them, like looking it up on Google. And if I don't have an answer for them, I'll reach out to some of my friends that are recruiters, but they're probably not in the same area. And um, it's a little bit harder to kind of make it work for them at that point. And I like to do as much as I can. And I know I can't control every situation, but try to refer out as much as possible. So I might actually use that Q&A um, system that you got because that seems more effective than what I'm doing right now. So just a little plug in. Um, so, so really the main reason why I asked that is because I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Aim High app. Um, so it's a really amazing app. Basically, if anybody is interested in, you know, wanting to get a hold of a recruiter, they don't know who to contact, stuff like that. There is a part in there where you just plug in their zip codes and it'll um, basically show who the recruiter is. It can be active duty, Air National Guard, um, reserves, you know, if they're wanting to do ROTC or Academy reps, it shows up in there as well. So it's it's an amazing app. Um, I don't know if you guys are wanting to tell that in your in your platform, but if you want to plug it in, Aim High app definitely can be something that these you know applicants can download. So, um, and also there is I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Star program. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Star program. Um, long story short, it is basically our referral program. So it's called Airman and Guardian Referral Program. So if any airman or guardian refers, you know, an applicant and the applicant makes it through the whole process, goes to basic training, we get an achievement medal. So one applicant equals one achievement medal, three applicants or three referrals, you get another achievement medal. And then the fifth one, you get like an air and space commendation medal. So um, it's a pretty amazing program. And in order to get that credit, they have to do it through the Aim High app as well. So with that, how do you think 
you know, how can, how, how do you think that we get that information out there to make sure that, you know, um, yeah, that these programs are getting recognized and stuff like that as an influencer? What do you guys think? Yeah. So the first time I heard about that app was actually when you told me about it and um, something cool that I don't think is advertised as well, or just, I didn't know, um, was that it was open to officers and I didn't realize that it was open to officers. I thought it was a fellow, you know, airman to airman referral program. But now that I know that it is, I know, you know, some other LTs on social media, and I think that it's great. And I, I plan to um, make a little post about it. I'm a little bit behind on content right now, but I do plan to say something about it, especially because having everything in one app, it makes it easier for everyone and the applicants themselves. So I'm really excited about it. We did have an email come down um, talking about the Aim High app. So I have it downloaded on my phone. I made my account and I haven't explored it or posted about it. So once I do get more familiar with it, I'm going to start posting more about it. Um, and then. I don't know if it's a link that we send to the potential recruits. Um, I don't know if you can confirm that or not, um, but then that's something that I'll probably try to do more. Um, I also have actually been, so one of my friends who is a recruiter, she is down here in San Antonio and I went to on a high school visit with her on Monday and I'm going again this Friday. So um, she was showing me her schedule and I actually saw on her schedule this rare um, Zoom meeting and I was like, oh, are you going to that? And she was like, wait, what is it? So um, I would like to say I recruited a recruiter to this program <laughs> that is so awesome so i know you guys mentioned you know like you're on a school visit you're, you're behind on your content you know stuff like that um is there anything that us recruiters can do to help support you influencers so i've already felt a lot of support from you guys so i wanted to say thank you for that i see um constantly a lot of my informational videos will get like reposted or reshared on some of the recruiter accounts and i really appreciate that um, and then, yes, if any of the uh, if anyone's, you know, local to Colorado, I'd love to, you know, do something in person as well. And I think that you guys have been very supportive of us. I definitely agree. I am also open to requests. So if you guys need any specific content, I did have one recruiter reach out asking for a day in a life video. For me, it's a little bit harder being an instructor because I can't involve students in those videos. Um, but I am working on figuring out how to work around that currently. Um, also LT, I'm, um, might get stationed in Colorado, um, this fall, possibly if I get this IDMT program. So I might, uh, try to collab with you. <laughs> yes, please. See, I just love that. We're connecting everyone. You know, that's the beauty about this rare program. Okay. Awesome. So I don't see any questions. Um, oh, I think you muted maybe, or maybe I oh yeah i am muted okay awesome thank you for letting me know i was just saying that was awesome you know the whole us connecting and that she's going to colorado stuff like that so this is amazing okay um there is no other questions that i see so i'm just gonna go ahead and close so i just wanted to end our meeting but before that i want to say thank you lieutenant lang and staff sergeant woolman for taking your time to be in a rare uh, meeting today and to everyone that's watching I would like to say thank you as well. I know time is important in a recruiter's world. And so for you to be here watching this, I just, I, I we really appreciate it. Um, if you have any suggestions or, you know, questions or any like influencers that you would like to for us to connect in the future let us know and then if there's any ideas that you would like us to do in a rare meeting let us know as well but other than that thank you all so much for being here and yeah you guys have a blessed day thank, thank you, you.